Hello and welcome to the Chromatic Podcast, where I bring you a fresh code of innovation, ideas, and insights from top experts in business, arts, and culture. I'm your host, Craig Bundren of Bundren Painting and the creator of the Bundren Building Arts Foundation. I'm very excited for today's guest as they have helped to change the face of the public art scene in Houston through murals, many murals, and a mapping system for those murals. For today's colorful guest, we have a twofer, a two for the price of one. We have Noah and Elia Kielis from the Up Art Studio. Up Art Studio is a Houston, Texas-based design house that facilitates art and design projects for urban and contemporary artists, communities, corporations, and municipalities. The studio's mission is civic pride through civic art, and they work on projects that educate, move, and engage communities through public art. So let's cut right in and get rolling. Noah, Elia, welcome to the Chromatic Podcast. Hey, thanks for having us. We're excited to be here. You know, with, with, with such an introductory, what do we? What else do we need to talk about? That's that's really us in a nutshell. <laughs> you want to just stop it there and we'll move on? Yeah, yeah, go on, let's go. <laughs> let's just talk well, about me, my favorite subject. Just <laughs> Let, let's start with everybody getting to know uh, a little about you in the studio. So how did how did this project get started? Which which one of you came up with the grand idea? Okay, so that would be my fault. Or, or that would be my, my doing, however you look at it. So in 2009, I got rejected by PhotoFest as I was a photographer. And we just had our newborn. And PhotoFest rejected me. So I went to a friend of ours and they said, sure, you can use the space. I turned this exhibition space into... It was a shell space. A shell space. We turned into an exhibition space. Thank you. And then so from that, you know, in 2000, we, we had that exhibition and then in two, moving along in 2012 I had the opportunity and a good friend of mine a neighbor Miguel Machado said hey Noah why don't you use this space over here you did a really great job and just turn into your, your photography studio I said great I had this brainiac idea of of maybe creating a, a graffiti street art gallery slash studio and Miguel Machado passed away in that time and so my patron then gifted us the the space for about a year. And in that time, we produced a show a month. And without having any overhead, it, it, it gave us a platform to discover what, what it is we wanted to do. And, you know, all of that came about because of Noah's roots. Growing up ah, on the yes. south side of Chicago, he was a graffiti uh, vandal. Uh, we don't we don't like calling him a graffiti artist because that's not what he was. Right when the Kinder <laughs> Institute uh, wrote wrote an article uh, on us and they called me a graffiti artist, I asked them to you know retract it. They're like, no. And I was like, <laughs> okay, well, because nothing I ever did had any artistic motivation. It was strictly to to scribble my nom de plume, if you will, on onto a, a surface of it, whether it be state, federal, municipal, or private property. I was a graffiti tagger in on the south side of Chicago. That's what I did. And it was it was fun for while it lasted. <laughs> and so <laughs> fast forward, he grew up, but still with the appreciation for that. Mm-hmm. And I've always had an appreciation for the arts as well. And uh, so the space was there. We did the we did the monthly shows, had murals painted inside and out, I showcased different street artists from Houston, not just from Houston, actually a few no. nationally and internationally as well. I like I like to add that due to my graffiti transgressions if uh, some would, would say but uh, due to my my, relationships. my my relationships and my roots i you know i reached out to my friends they're like no just do what you do best and just do you and so it's exactly what we did and we reached out to our home our my hometown you know artist partners in chicago because that's where i am that's where i'm originally from don't hold that against me now guys you know i was <laughs> born and raised and educated on the south side of chicago my my children are the ninth generation tejanos on my mother's side from Webb County, Texas. And so I grew up, I grew up coming to Texas my entire life. And in uh, in the summer of my 21st year, I decided to immigrate to Texas. (laughs) That's what I call it. (laughs) Head for a warmer climate. Exactly. And so, and and through that, you know, just utilizing, you know, our, our, my heart song, if you will, to, to basically turn my dreams in, into reality. And I, I'll say this because Elia, Elia really coined the phrase, I'm the dreamer and she's the believer. You know, we, we just celebrated our fourth year of her leaving commercial real estate. She was, she was an executive when she left a high level. Elia? Yeah. Well, I was in commercial real estate as a director of uh, marketing and research for a, a national firm. And it was, while I was passionate about commercial real estate 
I started becoming more passionate. You know, I was doing helping Noah and, you know, we were working on Up Art Studio on my time off, you know, basically, my, basically in the evenings. and Basically weekends. turning my dreams into her nightmares. <laughs> and at some point, I think my love for art and what we were doing in that space superseded everything. Superseded my love for commercial real estate. And fortunately, I had a, at the time, the, the owner of the company that was, you know, he's an entrepreneur as well. So he, he knew what I was doing and he kind of allowed allowed flexibility in my schedule. And so, so I kind of went to more of a part-time role in commercial real estate <laughs> until we got to the point where it was like, I'm just not going to do this anymore. It's just not, <laughs> I just can't. It's just know? not conducive to our business. It's just not conducive to our business. And I'd rather focus my efforts on what we're doing um, because I get so much more pleasure out of the community aspect of what we're doing. You know, the, the beautification that has a much far reaching impact on the everyday person. And I think that's important. And let's be clear. Our mission is civic pride to civic art. It's not just a catchy phrase. It's something we truly believe where we, we aim to educate, move and engage people through public art using psychology color to drive those emotions of happiness. You know, I, I, we heard your podcast, the, the recent one, and, you know, we're, we're talking about, you know, we're in this unusual time, not just here in Texas, not just here in Houston, but around the globe. And, you know, we figured, you know, that this is exactly our, our, our point that we've been trying to drive home where, for years now. And everybody, we're not the first to do it. We're not the only ones to do it here in Houston. But we're the ones to do it with, 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 with our mission to where that's, that's solely our mission is, is, is to help bring the light onto public art because it's accessible to everyone and it's for everybody. And, and it's, it's literally for the people, by the people, and usually done with the people's input and from mm-hmm. the community. I think that's a great point. And, and as I've talked to people and I've mentioned on other podcasts, it's been art was the first thing to go. And a lot of people say it's the last thing to come back, but it affects everybody, whether you realize it or not, it's all around you. And it's whether you take the time to, to really appreciate it or if it just plays in the background, but it, it is there regardless. Absolutely. You know, uh, when, when the pandemic started, when, we, when the city of Houston closed down, we got notification from multiple departments because we hold a contract with the city of Houston, Texas for public art, in partic- so the mini and particularly the mini murals. And when they <laughs> uh, stated that we were the essential personnel to the city, we're like, huh, amazing. You know, to your point, you know, the city of Houston didn't give up on, on the arts. You know, they understand the the importance I, I think that Debbie, especially in a challenging time right mm-hmm. i think that the director at moca at the mayor's office of culture affairs debbie Vignolti, understands this and she's a proponent and especially with all the funding that they're providing for for artists you know in, in the i may be speaking out of turn here but i think that houston texas is the only city in the republic that does individual artist grants you know from the city itself to uh, to private individuals and i think it's amazing you know, and for us to hold the contract where, you know, we're able to create so much civic art in communities spread around the city of Houston. You mentioned the map earlier, you know, that that's that's a great indicator of how Houston is receiving, creating and, and appropriating their own public art. There's a, a lot of things that you've covered in there. There's a lot of, of great information in there. And uh, I want to get to a lot of it as, as we move forward, but I, I will move in since you mentioned the, the mini murals. Talk about the mini murals a little bit and how you got that started and, and the benefits that you see for, for the city with that program. So how that got started was we had just finished working on the, on the biggest mural in Houston project. And we had started to... That's the Preservance La Creation. In Midtown the, with Mr. D., Mm-hmm. The God with the spray paint in hand, or not God. The, re, <laughs> the, the reappropriation the, of creation of, uh, of Adam. Adam when uh, we reappropriated, when I say we the row, we, when Sebastian created a uh, God holding a can of spray paint and a stencil. That mm-hmm. one. So that was the first project that we did where we learned of this, because we're a for-profit organization, a uh, company, but we work on a lot of nonprofit projects and there's uh, something called fiscal sponsorship where we can basically team up with a nonprofit. The nonprofit is the fiscal agent. And so we're able to take 
tax deduct deductible do donations and all those kinds of things for the project. So that got me thinking of once we were done with that project, well, what can we do? You know, this is, this is great. This means that we can more easily do public art than I initially thought. And what, what can we do that will have a great impact, not just on one location, but on many locations. And I started doing some research and I saw that, you know, a traffic signal or utility box program was being done all over the world for many years. And from Auckland to small cities in Texas to why not Houston? I mean, we're the fourth largest city. This seems like such an easy, low cost, highly visible, high impact way of spreading public art. And so I, we reached out to the director of public works or deputy director of public works at the time, time Jeff Weatherford traffic signals just on a, you know, wing and a prayer. And he, <laughs> and to our surprise, he, he was enthusiastic about the project and said, you know, this is, this is wonderful. We love it. I love it. I, I definitely want to work with you on this. I just have to tell you, we don't have any funding. So don't Yeah. Ask. And at, at, the, at the same time, they had tried a concept before and they had given them three rules where they had painted a few boxes on, on the Southwest side of Houston and they were given them three rules and they broke five. And so, <laughs> so that led them to, okay, well, we, we can do this, but we have to have certain safeguards in place. You know, there's sign ordinances. And, and so, we, so uh, when we presented our, our, our program, our project, our, our attempt at it, you know, we, they saw that, you know, our, our, with the project that we just came off of with the, with the President of Creation on the biggest mirror in Houston, again, once again, painted by Mr. D. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they saw that, you know, we were able to, you know, one, manage a large budget and at the same time, you know, take it, go from, from, from macro to mini. And that's exactly what we did. And we had, we didn't know that this mini project would be so big, you know? So they, so, so to go back to public works, he says, we have zero funding. So if you guys can figure out a funding mechanism, then I'm, I will be, you know, very supportive of this project. And so we worked with the Mayor's Office of Coastal Affairs, Houston Arts Alliance, Fresh Arts, and we started reaching out to council members because we learned that each council member at the time had a discretionary uh, council district service fund. And we just started reaching out to every council member that would take a meeting with us. And when we met with council member Larry Green, um, who's no longer with us, he was the first one to say, I think that this will have a great impact on my district and I want to do it. And I want to not just support you guys, but I want to double down on it. So it, we, we originally went to all the council members that would sit with us and we said, we want to do um, a mini mural in every district. Well, council member Larry Green said, you know what? I'll do 10. No, I'll do 20. At the end of the day, he did 31 boxes for the pilot phase. It launched off like a rocket ship. And, you know, I'm, I'm being punny here, but everybody was green with envy once once um, they saw what Larry Green's boxes did to his community. Mm -hmm. And it, it, in his own words, may he rest in peace, it, it gave a level of... of, 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 of Cultural, cultural, excellence. cultural excellence. There you go. I apologize. A level of cultural excellence that otherwise wasn't there, you know, because it's a, it's such a broad district. You know, he has a community that was traditionally redlined to now, you know, to Westbury and, and you know, and some of the nicest in Maryland and Maryland, Maryland and some of the nicest city areas of Houston. My point is that Larry saw the potential that this could bring, and and the fact that our one pilot program created more public art than the city of Houston had outside of the loop in his, in his, in his public art collection. And, With just the pilot phase. And, 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 and today, we have, a, between the city of Austin, Texas, and Houston, we have 300 mini murals that we've created around... around yeah, three, uh, more than 300 mini murals. All um, on, on traffic devices? Yep. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a couple, there's like maybe one or two Metro boxes and a couple of AT&T boxes, but otherwise they're on the traffic signal control cabinets. Yeah. And, and to that, you know, I, I like to say that we've given an art, we've, we've paid an artist to create each and one of those boxes. We paid them for their design and for their implementation. If you just do a simple math, you know, a thousand dollars, Per box is what is what an artist is being compensated for. Mm -hmm. So we've put a lot back into the creative community here in Houston, and we're really proud of that. I would be too. That's that's an outstanding accomplishment. You've you've also mentioned Austin. Have you you've put the program into Austin? Any other cities? 
We are, we've got one in Laporte and that will grow. We're going to be launching Pasadena, Bel Air. We've done a few, or more than a few. We've done, we've done uh, two handfuls there. And then we are getting ready to do one in College Station for a private developer. And so we, we, we expect for the program to continue to, to grow, not just here in Houston, but, you know, in, uh, in other cities as well. We even, we were even reached out to a city in Florida that has seen our work and is also interested in us initiating our program there. In fact, we were, we we're actually getting ready to help, you know, because what Up Art Studio is, you know, we started off as a studio, I mentioned that, but as, as a public art group and a consulting firm base, uh, base a consulting firm based in Houston, well, our mission is, like I said, civic pride and civic art, but we also don't have any borders. Like, so yeah, we go. Yeah, and- so we're, we're, we're really national in, in our scope. I mean, I think that our, our model really fits any city because, you know, everything that we do is with the community in mind and it's that specific community. You'll notice that many of the mini murals are reflective of their surrounding community. You go to the hobby area, for example, and they are a bunch of aviation themed, you know, or, or even hobby airport themed murals. So generally, they're reflective of the community. And, and that can be done anywhere, not just in the United States, but in the world. On on the, the mini murals, is it a one and done? You, you've talked about that you have a contract. Is it a one and done type scenario? Or let's, let's say that you've got one on the on on Bel Air? one in Bel-Air that you, you, you've done in years past, does it get redone or is it you've just moved on from that? Is it an ongoing thing for more artists to jump in on? It is up to the sponsor if they will, you know, for example, there was a box we lost recently and the sponsor said, I'll pay for it again because we love the art so much. It lasted five years. We got our money's worth out of it and we're okay. Somebody crashed into the box. So it wasn't because the artwork wasn't, was right. no longer, you know, the, the artwork outlived the life of the box. Yeah, Craig. And that happens often. And that being said, there's over almost 3,000 of these cabinets throughout the city of Houston, Texas, you know? So, we, yeah, we expect the program to just continue. Sometimes we'll redo boxes that have already been done. In fact, we're other doing, times we're doing we'll get just, ready to do a box. Yeah, and that's what I said. Mm-hmm. And other times we'll, you know, we'll start fresh. That's awesome. So if artists want to get involved with that, do they just need to reach out to the Up Art Studio for that? Yes. And we are about, to, not about to, but in the fall, sometime in the fall. I know we're already getting late very, fall. very, well, let's call it late fall. We're going to be launching a rolling open call. So that means all year long we'll be accepting applications. And then we'll, re- we'll be reviewing them every two to three months. And that way we can keep the, the artist list fresh and um, always welcoming of, of new artists. Yeah, we just recently had an open call with the downtown management district, um, and we had about 250, 230 applicants. applicants. And out of those applic, out of those almost 300 individuals, we picked 80. Mm-hmm. And prior to that one, we had a, I guess it was a 550 applicants, and we chose 30. And just well, we ended up with 45. Four. So basically, it's we end up with about 10% of the applicants. I mean, it just kind of works out that way. I don't, that's not by design, but I think that's just the way the way it is. You know, we we do, you know, we work with both emerging artists and seasoned artists. But when when we are reviewing applications, and we're not just it's not just us reviewing them. It's also, you know, we'll either have a panel or we'll have you know some other other opinions, not just our own. And full disclosure: I am, I've, I've recused myself from the open call selection process early on. Yeah. It's too much. I've, 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 the hate emails, and I've actually been I was attacked once at a at, at uh, the, actually twice at twice. It, uh, <laughs> yeah, verbally and physically. And so, yeah, so we, but yes, we, we definitely want more artists to have the opportunity, but we do want artists that are technically, you know, th- th- that are right for the project. It, it, you can't just have um, any artists. A lot of these boxes are done with, you know, commissions. They're, they're, they're more like commissions. So the sponsor will say, I want a box of, you know, they'll give us like a general theme usually. Sometimes they'll pick from like our, our stock renderings, but a lot of the times they want something, you know, specific to their community. And so they'll give us a general theme. We'll put out the call for renderings. We'll get back some design ideas from some of the artists and, and, and the sponsor chooses. So yeah, we, we, we definitely are, are always looking for artists that are skilled 
technically and and design wise. And even yes. if and and even if you're an emerging artist, you know, I, I like to talk to emerging artists. We had a, we've had some individuals who've never painted a mural, and and they become some mini mural painting individuals. So again, it just really just it just depends on the attitude, the aptitude, and the willingness for an individual to get out there and work. I, I I've always said this the hard work uh, beats talent any day the talent doesn't work hard but it's always the the opportunity to try new things step out of your comfort zone and evolve and and, and that's a great opportunity to add as well on the you, on the the mini murals obviously that that's an outstanding thing i love the fact that they're small and very localish and, and the way that they're done. And it really puts the, the, the flair of that community out on display. You also do large scale murals. You mentioned earlier, the largest one in the city that y'all have done. Um, are you working on other murals as we move forward and what areas of Houston? Yeah, well, so, you know, that big mural that we did, you know, we, we, we were asked and approached by Mr. D in 2014, 2015, to create that project. And we, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, we did, we did a lot, but, you know, the, Mr. D designed and created that project. And what we do is we, we, through that project, we learned a process that we call artist partners. And we are, we partner with artists to create large scale murals. And, and so currently we are, one of the projects that we're working on that we're proud of is the yes to the census mural campaign. Mm -hmm. We have, we have one being painted right now in the second ward. That is going. That is our sixth sixth one. It is the final one of the series. Uh, we painted them in with data with data in mind. We focused on hard to count communities. We worked with Lopez Negrete Communications was our client, and their client was the City of Houston and Harris County. And so we worked with with them and the data partners, January Advisors, Black Sheep, who kind of did the branding for the campaign. Craig, I'm about to launch off like a rocket ship here. Okay, <laughs> so when when it comes to when when it, when it comes to the murals and mural arts, I, I would have never thought being a graffiti vandal on the south side of Chicago, running from you know you know shadows and and everything else in between, that I'd be where I'm at now. But when you think of murals in in the modern context, I think that it's 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 as 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 a, as a, as a Chicano as a Latino, uh, it's my it's my it's my honor, it's my duty to create them in the best way. Now, for a person who, who, who paints, you know, hundreds of thousands of square feet murals a year, I, I don't paint the murals. As, as, as I'm more of a, of a street curator. And, and my mission is to, is, is to take back what Diego Rivera, Siqueiros and Orozco, the three, those tres grandes, the three great ones, those are the individuals that if, I'm sure you know, but, uh, so the listeners can hear and understand, Look up Los Tres Grandes. And these are the individuals, when you think of murals in the modern context, these are the, these are the three Mexican painters and muralists that created the, the, what you think in the modern, in the modern context of murals. So then in the 1970s and 80s, you know, the Rumiento was, was passed on and you have, you know, artists like Leo Tenguma, for instance, he's an example um, of artists that painted in that time. And then you had, then you had this generation of, of lost kids in the wilderness, such as myself, you know, growing up, you know, how oh, look at those cool murals, but you know what, I'm going to bust a tag here and do a fill in here and paint that train and, 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 and go scratch windows on the buses. And so through this time, I've, 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 I've figured, you know what, this is my recipe. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a street curator. And, and what we try to do is create murals in the public right away where we help instill once again, that civic pride through civic art. Going back to my my roots and not knowing that while I was out doing graffiti, that I was encompassed and embracing what is this modern movement of murals. Okay, so Noah will talk about himself all day long if we let him. So I'd like to also talk about some of the other mural projects we're working on. One of the things that we're working on is a mural festival called Big Walls, Big Dreams. In this case, this is a festival that we've done during Art Basel in Miami for five years. This is the first time that we're bringing it to Houston, and we're really excited about that. Um, of course, with COVID, 
we're keeping it to uh, regional artists um, because we want to, you know, we thought it would be great to keep it local. And we're working with Port Houston as is the main partner slash subject of the festival. So we'll, there will be a lot of mural or not a lot, but there will be several murals that are dedicated to, you know, Port Houston, its workers, it's, the the port has had a great impact on the East End community. So a lot of that is happening in the East End community. And we're working with multiple stakeholders, including, uh, you know, we have uh, Union Pacific is on board um, as a sponsor, the management district, of course, the TERS. And we're, we're starting to reach out to other port-related businesses for, for the festival. So that's something to look forward to in early spring. And right now we're doing all of the, all of the setup for that festival. So we're really excited about that one. That is exciting. Um, and let me see, what else, what else we have? We, you know, we're actually lately, we're also working on a lot of consulting reports. You know, we're, we're going to, to different um, districts and areas of town and, you know, talking about public art with them and, and where public art can be incorporated and, and uh, the types of public art. And we're doing a lot of, I think, education on this. And so really excited about that as well. And we're working with a Robinson on a livable center study for Montrose. We are a sub on that, on that project where we're doing community engagement with public art in mind, you know, public art abounds in Montrose. And so that has been a really uh, great opportunity there for us as well. And you guys are staying busy. I mean, we're staying extremely busy. You know, it, <laughs> there's so that, and that's awesome because it, 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 you, what you're doing involves other people. So it, yes. it's giving back to communities and keeping people busy that otherwise wouldn't be yes. busy. So that's an outstanding thing. I want to jump back for, for Noah, not that I want to get him to talk about himself as, as you, as you stated, <laughs> but you guys did a TED talk that, that I caught and it, it started talking about tagging and fill-ins and the way that, that that moves through society and and why people do it. I think everyone's familiar with tagging. They see people's names spray painted on bridges, trains, building. It, it, it's in every city. A lot of people uh, find it offensive. Other people really enjoy it. But from the the conversation you had on on the TED talk, you were talking about the evolution of the tagger and uh, yes. how to get them into creating art and and things that that people can stand behind. So I think just the educational part of that is is okay. really worth the time to listen. So so unfortunately, I'm going to talk about myself a little more. So uh, all jokes aside, you know this is all information that's out there. That's you know look, let's look at things anthropologically, right? As, as as evolution, if you will, of, of a human. Let's let's talk of evolution of a style, for instance, and that's and that's what this is all created. So someone is given their their tag, their nom de plume, if you will. All right, let's let's call let's call it a, a basic name, right? Let's call it. Then given that name, and then you learn how to write it. So then you learn this font on how to and how to tag. And based on on the generation of graffiti writer that I am. I'm a, I'm a second and a half generation graffiti writer. The evolution of style is what we, is what we want to call it. It's, it's the evolution of, of an individual from when, they're, when they get their nom de plume, their nickname, their tag, then they, then they go and they, it's the tagging and is writing your name is the sim- most simplest way to get up. And so that's what it's called. Getting up is, is vandalism. And you, 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 you evolve to what's called a toss-up, and then what's a fill-in, and then from a fill-in to a piece, and then from and from a piece you do a production, and then from productions, you know, if you stick with it long enough, and that's what I'm talking about. So, you know, if if you're an emerging artist, street artist, or tagger, you know, that's it. And so let's just be very clear: the the graffiti world from the street art world is a completely different world from the mural world. Graffiti and and in itself is a subculture. That is that has been popularized by the mainstream, like to make it look cool. When it actually it isn't. When most individuals, you know, are on the fringe, you know, quite quite frankly, they're the punk rock and and of of, of the art of the artist world. They're the uh, criminals, if you will, of the art world. You know, some you know, I mean, you have to be willing to really put yourself out there 
in, in a way to be arrested because you know the evolution eventually if you stick with it long enough you figure it out like in most things that you do that have that that have no real meaning to anybody else except your subculture you know you you grow up out of it you know so like most punk rockers don't listen to punk rock all day you know they're they're you know i, I think i know no one who's who can give me some investment advice but my, my my point that i'm getting at is you'll evolve into this creative into this creative individual and that's why i personally like working with individuals who have a graffiti background and the reason why i say this is because it's a lot easier to work with someone with a graffiti background than it, you can with someone who has a studio uh, a background because we're working in the elements and you know we got all kinds of things that, that are controllable and so going back to your original question the evolution of it Elliot, would you help me uh, articulate this because <laughs> the, 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 what i'm what i'm trying to say is you have to crack a few eggs to get an omelet and unfortunately the you know some of the world's i, I have just some of my best friends and some of my closest friends they're they're, they're and, I, and i'll say it to their face like i say it now you know, at one point in our lives, we're all kind of a little bit, a little bit of a dirt bag. So, you know, in order, in order to do it, you, come on, you got to be, you know, you're going to, I wrote on a, I got a, on a guy's dog once, you know, I said, you know, I wrote on, I spray painted on trees, on buses, on vans, you know, on work vans. So if you're, if you're going to commit to, you know, scribing your name or, or, or doing your art form, which is graffiti or vandalize something, you have to understand with it comes an inherent risk of, being, you know, chased by 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 a, an a, a cop, citizen. an angry citizen, a, a hero, or you know, or someone just looking, you know, a vigilante. My my point is that graffiti is is it can be looked at it in two ways, you know. It's like I'll, I'll give an example: the be someone bridge, right? Yes. All right, everybody loves it. It's a positive affirmation, correct? Correct. All right, but I'm going to break it down to you and all your listeners. Craig, it's someone's nom de plume. That's his name. It's an individual who writes, be someone. That's it. There's, there's, no, there's no big message out there. The guy, but if somebody I, gives it a message, you know, it, it's like any other art. If somebody yeah, gives absolutely. it a message, and, and, if it speaks to that, me that way, then that's what it means to me. Exactly. Yeah. But I just wanted to make a point. You know, the, that's just... And, and, and the individuals, you know, we have, it was great. It's a great nom de plume. And the transition comes, I think, that when that, there's there's some individuals who are graffiti writers who just are graffiti writers. They're not looking to become a street artist, or an artist of any kind. They literally just want to be out there and vandalizing. Mm-hmm. And then you have those that take that experience and use it for something more. And, and, they, and, they, and, and they're... And in that, you know, just like Noah said earlier, the more you do it, the, you know, hard work beats talent, beats out talent, right? Uh-huh. Um, because the more you practice, just like with any kind of craft, the better you'll be at it. And so a lot of those guys and gals just kind of naturally transition into, uh, into murals. Yeah, like I, I'll, I'll speak to Ramon Static. You know, he's one of our, our examples of, you know, when, when, when hustle and talent meet the road together and how and how that came about was you know he committed he 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 caught a felony crime for tagging for writing with a with a marker on on a on a surface right public transportation so they threw the book at him and he then said you know what i'm not going to do this anymore i'm going to figure out how to turn my my skill and talent into 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 a, a paying opportunity well not only did he do that, he's a college graduate, went, went to one of the most prestigious art schools in the Midwest, and is now, for all intents and purposes, our, our studio resident artist. Because, what, you know, we, we're working on a mural project with him right now in Detroit. In Detroit, we've got a project called Growing a Brighter Tomorrow. And Growing a Brighter Tomorrow is a project where we go in and celebrate a community. And, and we work with children and Elia. Yeah. And we work with children to create a, a mural with their, not just their input, but with some of their drawings, the kids don't paint the entire mural, but they, 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 they do like in, in class, they'll paint these, these canvases that we give them and then we'll incorporate those into the mural. And what we do is we, we ask the children to give us positive aff- aff- affirmations and aff- 
affirmative words to them and like joy, love, peace. And we just finished a, a mural on eight mile and, and the mighty oak cannot grow without being the, the tiny acorn. Mm -hmm. And so what we did is we took these individuals drawings and incorporated them into the, into the acorns being planted into the ground. And then from those acorns, you know, come a mighty oak tree. And, and that's, and that's, and that's what this, this project represents is we go into under underlying communities with that are socially and economically challenged. And we, we give them something that was otherwise was never there or would ever be there because who would spend $40,000 on a mural, you know, or $30,000 on a production of a mural. Nobody would, but thanks to Kaboom and the Ralph C. Wilson foundation, uh, we've been able to, I'm proud of this, be able to go and complete these projects. And then we're, and we're now moving forward with mystic theater in Detroit, in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And create a second one. to create the second one, mm -hmm. and 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 that and that's in a historic, goal Latino neighborhood that's been redlined, and you know, it's just what it is. And so we're we're going to go in with the input of the community and create something big, broad, and beautiful. <laughs> no, no, you 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 answered the question and 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 then some. But but that's uh that that's awesome. I I going back to the the graffiti people that start out. I. I'm I'm not a person that's a proponent of graffiti, but I'm a proponent of seeing people change their lives and and move forward. And that's really sounds like what what's being described here. We we've all made bad decisions as we grew up. I'm I'm very very guilty of a lot of bad decisions, doing a lot of bad things that I would never think about doing now. But that doesn't mean that I couldn't change. And there here's people that that are talented, that have a creativity to them, and they're just pushing it out in a, in a direction that's not really accepted by society. But when they figure out that it, they can move it to the right a little bit and it be accepted and they can still get that, that benefit of taking the creativity out of them and applying it. I, I think that it just, it's, it's an amazing opportunity to change someone's life and, and they will pass that on and change other people's lives through their art. So it's, it's it, it's really great that that really excites me if you can't tell <laughs> no thank you thank you for recognizing that and and, and again civic pride of civic art <laughs> yes yes you also with with the murals so you've, you've had the murals the mini murals and then your latest project that has been met with great fanfare is the uh mural map you want to oh, go over yeah. that yeah absolutely i just i just want to say that at this at this at this at this point, we're going to have to let Elliot talk about herself because, you know, <laughs> no, ser seriously, look, I think I might have said this earlier in, in, in the beginning of the podcast, but I'm the dreamer and she's the believer. And what that means is, you know, together, you know, we, we come up with these amazing ideas. But then at the end of the day, Elliot's doing a lot of this implementation and coordinating and getting it taken care of. So, Elliot, why, why don't you talk about this? Because this is, this is really all you. So the Houston mural map. You know, started. We, I mentioned that we uh, are working with Asakura Robinson on a mm -hmm. Montrose Livable Center study, and one of the tasks for that I needed to do was uh, document all of the public art in Montrose, or as much as I could. And I did a lot of online research, and we went on a few drives. And a few drives. So this <laughs> this this study that we're working with Asakura Robinson spawned this amazing idea. You know, because again. It's, it's she, she wasn't the first one to think of, oh, let's create a website and let's tour, you know, around the city to take images and, and, and post and, and, and data on, on these um, murals. Mm -hmm. And so, so we took, I took that information, we, we created a map for the Montrose Livable Center study, and then I saw an opportunity come up for a digital grant from the city of Houston and the Houston Arts Alliance. And I started thinking, well, what, what project could we do with a, a digital project? You know, this is all new to everyone because of COVID and we hadn't really been thinking of public art in that context so much. And it just, I don't know, it just kind of came to me. I thought, why not see if we can put together a, a, a map? And th the funding wasn't very much. I mean, it was literally like $2,500, um, not really enough to build uh, a brand new website. So we took the mini murals website that we already had in place as a border and, plate and i enlisted our website developer um, who's also our photographer who's also our photographer and i said <laughs> hey i've got this 
got this crazy idea, but you know, it's really not any enough money to cover our time. So maybe I just shouldn't apply for this grant. And he said, no, let's do it. I'm on board. You got me. And hopefully we'll find a way to 20,000 hours later, get paid down the line. (laughs) But yeah, then we worked for like three weeks straight, day and night, him on the back end and, uh, yeah, and, and me working closely with him on what about this option or how do we do this? And, you know, not to mention coordinating with artists, artist groups, districts, nonprofits. I started, I start because I thought there's no way I could literally go out and photograph all of these murals. (laughs) And so I started thinking about all of the people on Instagram that post themselves with murals or that post pictures of the mural mural hunters. The mural hunters. I, I reached out to them and I reached out to, so many people that I thought would have would be a good resource for a lot of photos um, and information on mural projects going on in Houston. And we ended up with over 700 pieces of art on our first, on our first import of data. Wow. So it was, it was more expansive than I thought it was. I'm glad we started off with Montrose because so much is in Montrose that that cut off, cut out like 20% of our work, just that district alone. Montrose has the highest concentration of public art in the, all of the city. I have to think that Houston is one of, is one of the, the last uh, cities in the Republic that, you know, we're able to create art for art's sake. You know, um, the city of New Orleans, you know, our neighbor to the, to the east of us, you know, th- uh, up until recently, they had a freedom of speech ban, if you will, when it came to murals. So the fact that, you know, the, the current administration, Mayor Sylvester Turner and the, the city council members support murals and public art, you know, I think it's great, especially especially with, with, with MOCA, the Mayor's Office of Cultural Affairs and in HAA, Houston Arts Alliance. You know, th- I, these, are, these are all arts organizations and groups that if you're an individual artist, I, I recommend you look them up because they're great resources along with Fresh Arts, which mm-hmm. is another one of our partners. Fresh Arts is, is, our, is our main fiscal sponsor when it comes to mini murals and, and, and other projects, and other as, projects well. as well. And in fact, there, a mural, map. Mural, mural map is one, yeah. is one of the, one of the projects they, they fiscally sponsored. And I, I want to drive this home. You know, our mission is, 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 is what it is, but we were a for-profit organization working on a, a lot of non-profit projects. And, and what that means is that we're able to navigate and circumvent certain parameters and we'll be able to cut through, I'll just cut through it. We'll be able to cut through the BS and, and get the projects done. <laughs> right. And, and that's, and that's just, that's where it's at. Sorry, I'm a little neat handed. And sometimes. then on the, on the mural map, you know, once we got it all, all the, everything in and we went to launch before we launched, we already had, I don't know, like 200 people had signed up on the website. And I was like, wow, I didn't know people were actually even looking, you know, at our social media, you know, about this. Our project and manager, I was, I was our pro- surprised. Yeah, our project manager was like, you know, we'll be lucky if we get a thousand hits the first month. The first month. Well, lo and behold, the first week we got seven ta- 17,000 unique visitors in the first week. And we were just elated and so surprised that it got so much attention. I mean, it's not like we did a major marketing campaign. We posted a couple of times on social media. I reached out to some media contacts and that was it. And it was enough. I mean, just that little bit was enough to literally get every single TV station to, you know, news to interview us. Some interviewed us twice. We did a segment on Localish. We had a, Greg, a print, I, I, print article in the Chronicle. I, I want to test all that to Elia and Alex Barber's hard work on, on the back end. I'm seriously, it, at one point, you know, they were texting at, at one o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. You kept hearing dings, you know, and they wake up and it's like, Hey, honey, how you doing? She's like, I'm sorry. I got to talk to my, my developer. I'm like, we, we didn't see Elia for three weeks. And I think we calculated it that if you calculated by the hours that they put in and what they got paid, they got paid a minimum wage of 1982. <laughs> or, or was it 1970? <laughs> <laughs> so I think it was like they got paid a dollar seventy five an hour. But it's, been, but it's been but it's been well worth it because it's been so well received, and I feel like we really did provide. They put a lot of love into a, that project. A good resource. We'll get a couple of emails that say, "Oh, I can't. It's not. I can't use it. It's not user friendly." And I'm like, you know what? We only had twenty five hundred dollars work with. I think I think we did a pretty good job. <laughs> so that being what said, we had to work with, and and I'm and I'm really proud of it. I, again, I keep saying that. I feel like um. Uh, boasting too much but i'm not i just i really love this no you're not it's a, it's a fantastic project and and i think it also 
really brings to the forefront of how much art there is in Houston, mm-hmm. how many murals are, because yeah. people see them in, in their daily drives or in their neighborhoods, but they're not seeing everywhere all the hidden corners that they are in the city. And it really opens up to everyone how many people out there are doing this, how much art's being applied to vertical surfaces. It's, it's, yeah. it's beautiful and it, it really accentuates it. Oh yeah, this just, this, this just speaks volumes to the necessity of the map uh, during this pandemic. You know, it's, it's a great, it's a really great way, you know, to get out and use it as a resource to, you know, we've actually used it to get out and to, and to save sanity and, and, and create peace of mind. To, I, I've discovered works of art that I had no idea existed and, and, and parts of the community that I had no idea were, were there. And, and I was just like, how can we make this any better? We, you know, Elia, Elia did it and with Alex and it's no it's not a brag when it's a fact you know it was a resource that the city of Houston needed they saw an opportunity to provide that and do a grant we were able to get that taken care of you know and I agree with you couldn't have happened at a, at a better time people no. needed something to be able to drive by and, and, and go look at or, or get out and go look at without intermingling with other people because of the the fear that that was going on through the city at that time so, so we're, we're getting close to the, the cutoff. I, I wanted to, to ask what you guys think. Where do you think Houston is in the, in the art scene? Because I've heard people talk about that Houston's really not one of the artistic cities. And, and, and it's really surprised me. And it's really surprised me how much art is in Houston. So Everywhere first of all, that, that you look. You can find right. it. Who said that? Who said that? So I can go beat him up. <laughs> we'll go find him. <laughs> go find him. No, I think <laughs> historically, I, I have to agree with that. Historically, Houston has not been regarded, bah, humbug. Has not been regarded as a center for, for art because you look at New York and LA and Miami, Chicago, and they're like literally teeming with, with, with oh, art. Oh, great. You know, but we, 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 we can sit here all day and disagree because, you know, we, I like to think that we have all the let, arts. Let me think. We, got, we do have all of the major performing arts. That, that's, that is true of Houston. Yes. Not, not every city boasts that. But I think that over the last few years, mm-hmm. there has been a big push in Houston uh, for more public art. Houston was not considered a great center for art. When, I, when, we, when you say that, I want to say public art. You know, for public art, For yes. public art. Absolutely. You know, we have, again, we have all, all, the, all the classic, you know, opportunities for art. You know, you have the Museum of Fine Arts, you have the theater, you have the ballet. But when you, when you think of the alternative arts, so the alternative art movement, uh, public art, sculptures, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that with our 31 mini murals that we created, in our pilot phase, we had more public art in 2015 outside of the loop that the city had in its collection. Now, you can, re- we can probably review Elia's uh, map, and there's more public art now. And I like to think the reason why we're able to do that is because Houston, we'll, we, we'll talk about the art fairs, for instance. You know, we, uh, that's a little uh, dark side of us that we don't share, but we also sell art. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm a collector and I, I'm 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 a I'm a dealer as well. And what we do is we've always focused historically on the gallery row, on, and you know you have your 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 major galleries, you know, in that area, and then you have your museums. But then that's just it. Then you have your private collectors, you know, who who can afford, you know, the twenty thousand dollar pieces and then you have the bayou mural festival the bayou festival the bayou, bayou, mural, bayou city, bayou city uh, arts Art festival. festival and then you have all the other art studios in 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 in, in, in houston you have all the arts districts you know we have five arts districts you know and and now as of recently they're now getting the momentum that they deserve uh let's talk about the arts district and the arts district uh for where fresh arts is at we're, Washington, the, Was- the Washington Ave. Now they're they're having a, a great, I say, rise in public art. You know, I like to think that you know it's due to individuals like, you know, who have created public art in, in Houston before. And I'm not saying you know. But to answer your original question, I personally think that 
yes, I mean, there has been lately, and as of the last few years, there has been a huge rise in public art with the support from artists, artists just getting out there and doing it, testing the waters to others who are more seasoned, just getting it done. And then also, not just the artists, but also there's been a, a big interest from the city, as well as uh, quasi-governmental entities like management districts and, and, and redevelopment zones that are all looking to use public art as a way to help lift communities. I really want to thank you guys for, for taking the time to come on here and have this conversation with me. I'm excited about what you do. I'm excited to, to see the stuff that, that you come up with next. Y'all have got a lot of stuff on the, on, on the plate there coming up. So if people want to reach out to you, your website is upartstudio.org. We will definitely put that in the show notes. And I just want to thank you guys. This has been interesting. It's been great. And I just look forward to your next projects. Craig, thank you for having us. We're really proud and pleased to be uh, your guest here. Thank you for listening to the Chromatic Podcast. You can learn more about what we're up to by visiting bundrun.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please rate and review it. Drop us a line. Join us next week for more insights on business, arts, and culture. Thank you for listening.